Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to discuss the TCS interview questions, which are which are shared by one of our subscriber. So, this is the part two of uh, our video, and part one is already out. I hope uh, you already seen it. So, in this video, uh, basically this video was for uh, platinum members, but I am posting out here so that you will know that uh, what benefits will uh, platinum members will get. And here I have like uh, questions which are very new. Uh, there are some architecture questions on microservices. Then uh, there are like uh, hash map questions, multiple questions out there. I will go through one by one and uh, you will get a lot of benefit watching this video and once you like write down these questions and uh, solve find out the answers for these questions you will get a idea that how you can crack any any interview okay and these are all real interview questions so trust me guys you won't find these question on any other channel or any other website okay so if you are struggling with the interviews please take a piece of paper and a pen open notepad write down all the questions and uh, take your time to find out the answers uh, some of the answer i will let you know here in the in this video itself so there are questions on uh, core java there are questions on uh, design pattern java 8 spring and uh, microservices as well there is a programming question as well i will tell you one by one so let me just go to another page here okay so we have this question which is a programming question and uh, you have to solve this without converting to a string so first of all we need to understand what is the problem statement so the problem statement is we have input like this a and b and we have to find out the output uh, there is another uh, input which is a and b and we have to find out the output so what is happening here here like if b is available inside a then we are removing b and that is our output if b is not available inside a that means the a is our output so that is the programming question which is asked which was asked in uh, tcs and uh, i hope you you get an idea how how like uh, how what type of questions are asked so make sure you prepare for these question this question and let me know in the comment section if you found uh, find any like uh, relatable source where others can also see uh, the solution for this okay let's move to the next question we have a next question which is uh, what is the architecture of my your microservices any idea on the model of microservices okay so there are two types of models in microservices one is orchestration and other one is choreography so interview wants to know that what type of model you are using in your uh, uh, microservices these microservices can be Spring Boot applications or can be other application. They are communicating with each other. Okay. And the communication is happening using any model. So uh, like I will add some of the links uh, from some videos which are very helpful uh, to understand the orchestration and choreography. Okay. The next question we have is it's a... Uh, another subsequent question which is is this the orchestration or the other one like it is controlled by one service or it is separated so as i earlier mentioned there are two types of models orchestration and choreography so interviewer wants to know that what type of model you are using in your project okay and uh, it is controlled by one service or it is separated so orchestration is something where you control other services from one service only it's like an orchestra uh, you know in orchestra what happens uh, a orchestra member is controlling everybody's instrument how they are playing the instrument something like that so this is the thing so uh, you need to prepare for this question as well and the another subsequent question is also the same same type like uh, interviewer wants to more uh, dig into these models and uh, microservices so this is the same thing you know the two models of microservices what is the orchestration what is the other one okay so i hope uh, you will get an idea how you like uh, what type of questions are there okay next question is are you maintaining the transaction across multiple microservices 
or it is a single transaction maintaining the transaction means uh, you are con connecting with the db and uh, transaction you know the transaction what is transaction transaction is something like it's a steps it's a steps if uh, uh, like multiple steps are happening for the db like to fetch the value or to get the value or to update the value what is what will be there if one step is failed then all the other steps will be also rolled back so that is a transaction so are you maintaining the transaction across, across multiple microservices because you see uh, maintaining the transaction is a hard thing across microservices because what happens like uh, you can put some code the transaction code into one microservice and maybe that microservice is calling other microservice in between and there it is changing the database i mean updating something from from the db so maintaining the uh, distributed transaction is different so interviewer asked this question uh, by this example uh, i will highlight this suppose one request came and user and uh, done some input and we need to submit to the database so it may hit database after going through one two three different microservices and all these microservices will be committing something so how it is maintained so as 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 this example like uh, you have one microservice okay and request came and uh, like you you did something you submit the database you update something value and hit the database okay and after like uh, going to multiple microservices your call is going to other microservice and there it is hitting another database okay and it it will came back to this microservice again and there it is failing so what what will happen how like it is it will maintain the trans uh, transaction it will be rolled back in this microservices or this microservice or the other microservices as well where it is it has been it it called in between so to solve this problem we have a saga design pattern so saga design pattern is used for the distributed microservices so the uh, other other question was same something like this like saga design pattern is there and some other patterns are also there but I am asking like any idea on how distributed transaction is made. So interviewer wants to know that if you understand about Saga design pattern because Saga design pattern is something which is used in the distributed transactions. Okay. Distributed transactions. Okay. Uh, another subsequent question is, is there any distributed transaction in your application? So you mean like it is not distributed single atomic transaction. So if if uh, like interview was not able to answer this question so that's why interviewer asked that if there is any uh, distributed transaction in your project or not okay so if you if there is any distributed transaction in your project then there must be a saga design pattern or some other design pattern which has been used which supports the distributed transaction so you need to like tell what is saga design pattern and how it behaves like how it is using the functionality of uh, distributed transactions okay uh, the next question is in hash map if i have to create my own key what should i take into consideration like in hash map your own key means if you are using keys as a object object as a key so what things you will consider so i will explain this when with one of the example suppose we have a uh, objects objects like e1 uh, like employee objects e1 and e2 and these objects ha are having some values values like employee name employee id and role number okay so what will happen if two employees if e1 and e2 are having the same values like same name same role number same uh, id everything is same then they must be considered as same object but uh, in java what happens whenever you are creating new objects with the new keyword e1 is created with the new keyword and e2 is also created with the new keyword they they the address won't be same the hash code won't be same so they won't be considered a same object so what you will do you will override equals and hash code method in the employee class and uh, whenever like you write your own logic you write your own logic inside equals and hash code and write there that if the values are same in these two objects these should be considered as same object okay so that is the case that is the thing we need to take care while using the hash map while using the keys uh, as object 
in inside the hash map so this was the question the other question or it can be a subsequent question as well key should be a mutable or immutable key should be uh, mutable or immutable okay so in the hash map keys will be always immutable it's better to have immutable keys why because immutability means uh, something is not changing so for example string is immutable in java string is Im immutable so it is immutable because it is more memory efficient if we are if it is uh, immutable so that's why we prefer always prefer string as a key in hash map and another question is what is the principle of writing immutable class so immutability means something is not changing so if you want to create your own immutable uh, class uh, from the scratch there are some steps you need to follow like all the wrapper classes are immutable okay and there are certain uh, steps you need to follow like uh, the, uh, the class should be final the class must be declared final okay I will highlight this the class must be declared final and the data members inside the class must be declared private why these are declared private so that uh, direct access is not allowed to those data members and these data members will be also declared final so that we can't change the value of those uh, data members okay so there are few more steps you need to follow while uh, while uh, like writing a immutable class so make sure you will read about uh, the immutability concept and Im how to write an immutable class because there is, that is also a very important topic another thing is hash code and equals so which one get called first so if you override it both hash code and equals method in your code okay so which one which one will be called first so in that case both methods belongs to object class and between them uh, equals is always called after the hash code that means hash code will be called first and equals will be called later so if you like google search about it uh, you will find uh, in the stack overflow you will find about it uh, why it is uh, called first why hash code is more important so uh, please read about it as well you will understand what is the actual answer okay uh, and i will moving to the next question which is suppose i have an employee id name and role number and based on id i am telling like uh, if it is the same or not name can be different that can i i have this thing into consideration that based on the id on it uh, it will tell that it should go into the same bucket or not these things can we write it on our own so I am sharing the question as it is as shared by the uh, interview as shared by the uh, interviewee the candidate our fellow subscriber so I am sharing it as it is uh, so you need to understand what what is the question actually I already told you uh, in the in one of my example in previous uh, questions about uh, hash code so uh, about hash code keys why uh, like what what things we need to consider while like creating ha hash code uh, keys sorry uh, hash map keys so it is similar to that okay so and then it will, we will move to the next question which is what is the contract between equals and hash code so these methods belong to object class and there is a contract uh, you have to find what is the contract i will just give you the hint that uh, uh, the contract is if you are overriding equals and hash code if we are overriding equals then we should uh, we should also override hash code method as well so please read about it about the contract in the details because uh, in this video i am sharing only the questions uh, not the like complete answers uh, this is this channel is only for the uh, questions which are uh, like asked actually asked in the uh, interviews okay and the next question is what is the difference between array list and linked list not the basic one so what is the basic difference between array list and uh, linked list basic one is array list is based on array uh, internally it uses array where uh, linked list uh, having nodes and values and related to each other 
Uh, array list and linked list they have similarities as well like both can have uh, duplicates value both keeps ordering but there are like a uh, main difference between array list and linked list while they resize their actual space the main difference this is not the basic one and many people don't uh, know this that uh, the main difference is where, where they like uh, when any of them is full they resize how they resize it that is the main difference so please tell uh, please read about the resizing of array list and uh, link list and you will get an better idea how to answer this question okay uh, the other other question is suppose i exceeded the limit of array list or suppose i exceeded the limit of link list okay what will happen are you aware about the contiguous memory allocation so if you exceed the limit of array list and if you exceed the li uh, limit of linked list so as i earlier mentioned in while uh, like telling about this question uh, the main difference is uh, while sizing where they extending uh, ex exceeding their limits and what is the contiguous memory allocation so in array list or in array in general what happens a big chunk of memory is allocated because all the values are at the like uh, in a in a contiguous memory because uh, and in the case of linked list all values are uh, at a different different places because linked list is something which is distributed in the memory and only they are connecting with the nodes number of uh, nodes numbers and all so in the case of array list it is stored as a contiguous memory like it's a big chunk of memory inside your memory so that is the main difference So this was this was the part two of uh, our video series, and uh, in this we have discussed more uh, questions. And like after this, I will start the part three as well in the next video because this video is already very long. And uh, uh, in in the next video we have design pattern questions, and there are multiple other questions as well which are very interesting. So make sure you watch that video and that part as well. If uh, like it is yet to decide that uh, i will post that part for uh, for for platinum members or for uh, everybody okay and please i i recommend you to take the platinum membership because uh, it will be very helpful there are like multiple questions and trust me guys if you like uh, solve the if you watch at least five of these videos and uh, prepare for the those questions only i am sure you will crack any interview in the current market scenario any interview you can crack okay so there will be questions on design patterns spring boot and multiple other questions as well collection and uh, java 8 is there so everything will be discussed in the next video of this series and there will be like uh, videos on the daily basis uh, from my side so if you are struggling with the interviews uh, please write down these questions and uh, prepare for these and i will see you in the next video uh, you can leave any like and comment or any feedback in any of my videos i will work on that as well and if you want to submit any interview questions you can also do that uh, to help in the entire community and to get the, the job in uh, java development thank you so much i will see you in another video